Hi everyone, I am coming to you from my home office this time um, and I'm going to be doing a second video on chakras because if you recall the first video that I put up I talked about the main seven main chakras and that's basically what I'm going to be talking about um, today. I tried to put the word mostly and basic together um, <laughs> because those are sort of the main focus right now. There are chakras in other parts of your body, like your hands and your feet and things like that, your ears, um, but we're just going to talk about the main seven. And in the last video, I kind of talked about what a chakra is. So a chakra is literally the Sanskrit word for wheel because they're kind of seen as little wheels. Your crown chakra's up here, your third eye here, your throat chakra, and your, your heart chakra. And the reason why I'm spinning is because each wheel, when it's clear and balanced, is supposed to be spinning, and spinning quite nicely. When you get a blocked chakra, and that's what we talked about in the last video, is what are some of the blockages and how they manifest themselves when you have a blocked chakra, so you kind of know which chakras you might need to work on. Um, so when it's blocked, the wheel stops spinning is kind of the idea. So there's a couple of different analogies that are used a lot with chakras. One is the wheel analogy. So they're kind of little wheel centers on each of your chakras. And just to recap, there's the root chakra, which is down between your legs. Then there's the sacral chakra, which is right below your belly button. Right above your belly button is the solar plexus. Then we move into the higher chakras, which is your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your third eye right here, and then your crown chakra. Um, the other analogy that's often used is that it's kind of like a river flowing and each chakra is kind of a little pond of each color. So the red, the root one is red and then we go into um, orange and then yellow, then green, blue, uh, sort of a, um, a violet uh, kind of color sometimes, um, or uh, indigo is often the most common uh, color for your third eye. And then your crown chakra is either clear or violet. Sometimes people go back and forth on that one. Um, so those are the main colors. And so like for instance, if your throat chakra is clean and clear and ready to go and not blocked in any way, it can be a beautiful pond of beautiful light blue coloring. And your heart chakra is a beautiful pond of a beautiful rich green color kind of thing. And the idea being that it flows from your crown chakra down to your root chakra and the water flows from your root chakra up to your crown chakra. So those are sort of the main analogies. So when, if you're using the river analogy with the ponds, that then if one chakra gets blocked, um, it's sort of like it's had trash and debris and it's all murky and mucky and muddy looking and it's not the clear color that it's supposed to be. So that's the idea. Now the other thing too is you very rarely have just one chakra blocked. So if you watched the last video where I talked about the blockages and how they manifest, you may have said on the throat chakra, oh, that's me, that sounds like me. And then on the heart chakra, oh, that sounds like me, that sounds like me. <laughs> and then you start to worry, it's like, wow, it sounds like me on all these chakras to some degree or another. It doesn't mean you have all the blockages, it just means some of those blockages can show up and manifest in that way. Now, if you, do have a blockage often like say for instance your throat chakra is blocked <clears throat> it will start to immediately affect your third eye and your heart chakra so then blockages can start to show up maybe mild at first and then when this gets blocked your crown chakra starts to get blocked and then from your heart down to your um, solar plexus that one starts to get blocked so they all are independent um, energy centers but they're also very connected um, so that's the paradox there. It, and when one gets very blocked, it starts to affect the other ones as well. So that's why it's always good to check in and see how your chakras are doing. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the healing activities you can do for your various chakras. Because you learned in the last video kind of what the gifts are that they bring and also how blockages manifest both on a spiritual, mental, um, and physical level. <clears throat> so if you find that, you know, uh, you have a blockage somewhere, 
then here's what you can do to kind of unblock because that's the big thing. People are like, well, I feel like my chakra is blocked, but I don't know what to do to unblock it. <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run down some essential oils that you can use to unblock certain chakras. So for, we'll start at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. So we'll start at your root chakra. Um, and that is the phrase I am. So I am is a very powerful phrase and I'm always telling clients to be very careful what you put after I am. So <clears throat> for instance, if you're saying I am angry, you become anger because it's very, you know, powerful what you say. When you say I am, you are actually literally bringing that energy into your soul. So instead of saying I am angry, because there's, if it's justified anger, if it, it, it's fine to get angry, it's not good to stay there or live there, as I say. But even worse is bringing it into your soul and bringing that anger to your soul and your heart. So instead of saying, I am angry, what you would like to say is, I feel angry. Because anger is a feeling. It's not a way of being. So when you say I am, you are bringing that way of being into you. Um, so be mindful of what you say after I am. That's why it's such a powerful um, energy. And that's why sometimes people get stuck in this vicious cycle of, you know, <clears throat> I'm always feeling so tired. Or I'm always, I'm sorry, I've trained myself to say feeling. <laughs> I'm always so tired, <laughs> you know, instead of I'm always or I'm feeling tired. You're putting that word, I'm always, I am always tired. You're creating that energy and you're bringing that tiredness into it. And you're pumping and boosting it up with the word always. Always is a sweeping word. And it has a lot of boost power behind it when you tag it along with the I am phrase. So that's a very powerful phrase. <clears throat> so it's very, it's very um, beneficial to be mindful of what you say after I am. <clears throat> so the um, essential oil that's really good for the root chakra I am is ylang ylang. Um, I love the smell of that. So that's an essential oil you can incorporate if you're feeling a little uh, like you need some grounding or that sort of thing. Because a lot of times when uh, your root chakra needs work, you're feeling very flighty, you're feeling very um, flaky and, you know, you can't make decisions and things like that. Um, so when you want to bring some healing to it, you can bring your lang ylang to it. Now, the next one up is your um, sacral chakra, and that's I feel. Um, and that one you want orange or some kind of citrusy kind of essential oil. Very good for that chakra. Now, for the next one, which is the solar plexus, is I do, because it's your one of your centers of action. Um, that one is lemon. So again, both those chakras are kind of a citrusy based one. Um, when you go to the heart chakra, that's I love, of course. <laughs> and that's eucalyptus is actually a really good um, essential oil to use for that one. Um, eucalyptus is very healing. It's great for colds. It opens up the lungs, the respiratory system, that sort of thing. That's why it's associated with the heart because the heart chakra is not just the heart, it's the lungs and all that sort of um, system as well. Um, the throat chakra, I speak, is uh, blue cypress is a really good essential oil for that one. Um, I see, which is your third eye um, chakra, and that cam chamomile is actually really good for that one. Um, and then your crown chakra, I understand lavender is a very good essential oil. So I'm going to go through some um, affirmations as well. Now you can get all of this in my chakra book if you want the book. Um, it's $25 and um, it's I sort of send it off as a PDF for you. So it comes very fast. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... It's best when you're meditating, you know, it's good to meditate on each chakra. So what you do when you're meditating, um, doing a chakra, basic ch chakra kind of meditation, is you focus on the color of each one. I usually start with the roots, so you start with red, then you move into um, 
orange and then you move into yellow and then green and so on sort of thing. So you're you're focusing that on that color and you're surrounding yourself in that color. And then each um, chakra has a, a affirmation with it. And you if you say it seven times, it's a very good, powerful manifestation, or I mean meditation. So the root chakra man, uh, affirmation is, I am connected with the power of the earth. It protects me and strengthens me. And then for the sacral chakra, I accept a flow of creativity in my life. I accept and embrace my natural gifts. And then the affirmation for your solar plexus, which is right above your belly button. I am confident in my power. I believe I have enough energy to reach everything I want. The heart chakra is there is an endless source of love inside me. In spite of any challenging situation, I love and approve myself. Um, <clears throat> then your throat chakra, I respect my uniqueness and freely and joyfully express myself. I deserve to be heard. Then for your third eye, your mantra is trust in my trust to my intuition leads me to success. I believe only good happens for me. I am grateful for lessons in every situation. And then your crown chakra, my soul helps me to see best in everything, find new ideas and solutions. Everything I worry about can be easily solved. I listen to the answers. It's a big one, listening to the answers. <laughs> now, one of the fastest ways, and when you're meditating, if you feel um, a resistance to one chakra, or you're feeling like I can't concentrate on that color, that's also an indication that there might be a block there and maybe some um, uh, more work is done. So one of the fastest ways to work on a, a chakra is to bring the color of that chakra into your life and to eat the color of that chakra. So let's say for instance, you're having problems with your sacral or your solar plexus, which is right above your belly button, right where your gut is, your gut instinct, that sort of thing. And it's yellow. So what you wanna do then is try and bring in more yellow into your life, more yellow color, whether it's yellow pillows, yellow clothing, yellow ribbons in your hair, yellow jewelry, um, just, you know, many different ways. You could have yellow sheets, put yellow sheets on your bed for a little while. You're sleeping in that color. Um, and then I also mentioned food. Food is another very fast way to bring um, healing to that chakra. Because food is, you know, healing when you eat it properly. So I've been told. <laughs> so with um, red, the root chakra, yes, you want red foods. So beets, um, red peppers, tomatoes, things like apples, that sort of thing. But also roots, root vegetables, because root vegetables ground you. They ground you very quickly. So anything that's grown in the earth. So your potatoes, your carrots um parsnips things like that any root kind of vegetables and onions are another good one too and proteins um, proteins are very important um, to bring into your diet when your root uh, chakra needs um, some work you might find that your body is also craving some of these foods as well so with your sacral chakra um, yes orange food so oranges um, orange peppers, um, I'm just trying to think of orange things. <laughs> think of some orange foods, <laughs> but also liquids. Um, when your sacral chakra is off, it means you need more liquids. Liquids, as far as water, definitely water, um, but also like oils, healing oils, not, not dead oils, okay? So canola and, um, what was the other one? I think vegetable oil are kind of considered dead oils. So you want like things like olive oil, um, avocado oil, coconut oil, that sort of thing. Those are more living kind of oils. Um, and even if it's just, you know, dipping bread into some olive oil 
and eating it or just I know some ladies will drink all of like just a little bit they're not drinking glasses of olive oil but they drink it it's actually really good for your skin <laughs> so liquids liquids of any kind so more soups and things like that more liquid type soups um, are required in your diet um, for your solar plexus definitely yellow foods so yellow beans bananas um, that sort of thing think of some yellow yellow peppers um, and grains grains are actually needed um, and good healthy grains doesn't mean you can eat bread doesn't mean go out and buy all the pastries you can find <laughs> although I would use that as an excuse but <laughs> healthy grains, you know, so bring some oatmeal into your life, um, have some porridge, you know, that sort of thing. Um, whole grains brought into your life. Now flax is a little bit different. You have to grind up flax in order for your body to get the benefits of it. So bring flax into your life, definitely, but that needs to be ground up. Um, but other than that, yeah, like try and bring in like really good whole grain bread if you want bread. Um, there's lots of ways to eat grains. There's um, Quano, I don't think I'm saying that right, but anyways, um, you know, uh, uh, sort of whole rice, you know, long grain, wild rice, that sort of thing, that's also considered a grain. Um, so look for those grains to come into your life if it's the solar plexus. And, and it's interesting because rice is actually very good for your tummy to settle it down. It works on my dogs every time they have diarrhea, I make them a pot of rice. <laughs> works like a dream so it's when I found out that it's sort of um, grains is for the solar plexus I'm like well it works on dogs why wouldn't it work on humans too so yeah so grains but good healthy quality grains not wonder bread or something like that um, uh, so then your heart chakra so your heart chakra is green so you need a lot more greens in your life so salads and spinach and broccoli and zucchini and I could go on and on about green like cabbage and green onions and there's lots of green vegetables but vegetables in general green specifically but vegetables if there's heart problems um, like and it doesn't mean heart problems physically I mean it can manifest that way but heart like heartbreak and things like that even vegetables will help that chakra it will help with forgiveness it will help with unconditional love all that kind of stuff so vegetables are very important for that chakra um, as far as food goes for your throat chakra so more blue food not a lot of blue food I think uh, blueberries um, right off the out of the gate but overall for your throat chakra fruit is what's needed so you know any kind of fruit it could be bananas apples oranges grapes blueberries you know try and bring more blue and bring more fruits into your life if it's the throat chakra that needs help um, I do eat a fair amount of fruit because I'm talking a lot so my throat chakra does need extra care um, so yeah fruit definitely works I can attest to that um, and then your third eye up here between your your, your uh, two other actual eyes um, so that one is uh, indigo but you know Again, what food is indigo, right? There's not a lot of indigo foods out there. But really, the food that really helps is actually spices and teas. So things like um, your tea, I mean, any kind of herbal tea really helps. Even black tea does help to a certain extent, so don't shy away from that. Tea in general. Um, and then also spices like turmeric and cinnamon and nutmeg and garlic and salt and pepper um that sort of thing not that you need to overload your food with salt and pepper but um you know maybe try putting a little extra pepper on your food and seeing if that helps clear up that chakra a little bit because salt pepper and garlic they're the holy trinity right of of spices those are the three that always go in my daughter and i always joke about like when there's recipes with garlic three cloves of garlic so you mean nine then right because we love our garlic <laughs> um and then uh, for your crown chakra, it's a little bit different. It's not actually something you eat. It's actually getting outside and um, having some fresh air. Fresh air is very cleansing for your crown chakra. So I'm going to go through some healing activities that you can actually do to help bring healing to each of the chakras. I'm going to start with the crown and work down this time. So with the crown chakra, like I said, getting out, having some fresh air, just, you know, breathing 
breathing really helps and I know that sounds silly because we all breathe but breathing mindfully and on purpose um, so this chakra actually loves the sounds of bells and chimes so if you have a bell in the house or a chime or something ring it every once in a while you can also look up on YouTube different sounds excuse me I'm not sure why I'm hiccuping there um, the other uh, healing activities um, is simply sitting in stillness and basking in the sunlight for 10 to 15 minutes um, so sitting in stillness just being quiet just being still very good for the crown chakra um, being out in the sunlight you don't need a whole big bunch of it. You don't need to sit out and sun tan or anything like that. Just 10 or 15 minutes being outside, getting that fresh air, getting some of that sunlight just to recharge you a little bit. Uh, it helps you connect to your sacral or your crown chakra again. Um, logic puzzles and brain teasing exercises also work very well um, to help sharpen it. Oh, sorry, that's the third eye. I'm reading the third eye. Okay, sorry. That's the third eye. So that's all third eye. I was thinking when I saw logical puzzles, I'm like, that sounds like more of a third eye thing. So it, yes. Yeah, so your third eye likes bells and chimes. So that's why when you're meditating, um, a lot of t meditations have a little chime in it. Ding. Your brain responds to that. And that actually your, your third eye chakra really likes that sound and responds to it. I have a whole um, bell healing ceremony that I usually do at least once or twice a year with my group of um, ladies whenever I'm in a circle or whatever. And it's super, super healing. And it's something you have to experience in order to really understand what it is because you are surrounded with the bell sound like you are just enveloped in it and it really clears up that third eye um so like i said sitting in stillness basking in the sunlight for 10 or 15 minutes and then the logic puzzles and the training exercise or brain teasing exercises are really good for the, your third eye so we'll go to the crown now and then we'll go back down to the throat chakra i hope you don't get too confused so the crown chakra actually likes silence so that's why the bee still didn't throw me off at first because it, it's very much like the third eye. It does like stillness. It likes silence. Um, so silence is a big thing for the crown chakra. And like I said, air, fresh air is very good. Meditation, fasting is actually very good for your crown chakra if you need to clear that up. Singing. Um, singing is very good, especially spiritually uplifting kind of songs. Prayer and chanting is very good for the crown chakra as well. Um, then with your throat chakra, so now we did the third eye up to the crown and we're going to go back down to the throat chakra. So the throat chakra actually loves the singing sound of birds um, and crickets. So you can get lots of those kind of things on YouTube if you don't have it, you know, naturally in your backyard or whatever. But go outside, listen to the birds. And when you go outside, pay attention to what you hear first. Because when you're outside, um, if there's wind chimes around and your third eye is needing to be cleared, you'll focus in on that sound. But if you're, if you find that your throat chakra needs to be cleared, you'll you'll suddenly notice the birds, right? Because your body responds to what you need, so your body will hear whatever sounds. Um, that will best sort of heal you. So the throat chakra loves the sound of birds and crickets. Loves that sound. Chirping birds, crickets at night time, that sort of thing. Some of the healing activities you can do for the throat chakra is singing. So singing helps both the crown and the throat chakra. They're very much connected. Um, writing a letter, whether it gets mailed to the person or not. Um, this is a very common kind of psychological activity that a lot of psychiatrists and um, psychologists employ of writing a letter of how you really feel or writing a letter of forgiveness or whatever to someone or how that person made you feel or why you're angry with them or whatever it might be. Writing a letter can be very therapeutic and it's very good for your throat chakra because it gets your words out, right? Um, calling a relative and talking, you know, just talking to your brother, sister, mother, cousin, aunt, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, whatever it might be. Being outdoors, being outdoors is always good for us. <laughs> and taking a leisurely walk, lying on the grass and watching the clouds in the sky go by is very good for your throat chakra. So now we're going from the throat to your heart chakra right here. And this chakra loves the sound 
of wind, howling wind in particular. Your heart chakra loves howling wind. And I know I respond to that big time. I love that sound. And again, you can um, leave your window a little bit open when it's windy so that you kind of get that howling sound. Um, or I do that a lot in my office here. My window is just open a little bit. And when it gets windy, it kind of has that howling sound, which is nice. Um, and then, um, or you can get YouTube videos that also have that howling sound. Um, healing activities for the chakra. Enjoying a stormy day. Now you can't always control that. It's like, well, I need a stormy day to do that. <laughs> Driving your car with the windows rolled down is actually really good for your heart chakra. Flying a kite. Deep breathing during a heart focused meditation is very good. So breathing um, mindfully. Now with your solar plexus, so your solar plexus is your fire, one of your fire chakras. So the solar plexus actually really responds to the sound of crackling fire. So either go out and build a fire if you can, if you've got one of those fire pits in your backyard, if you've got a fireplace or a wood stove or something, you can have a fire there. It needs to have that crackling sound though, so the gas fires don't always work unless they have the cra crackling sound. If you're out camping, build a campfire. Um, you can also, there's many channels, you know, on TV, on YouTube, everywhere of crackling fires. You can either get a fireplace one or a campfire one, whichever one you want. But the crackling sound of fire is actually very good for your solar plexus. Now, um, sitting around a bonfire is actually very good for your solar plexus too. Laughing, humor is big for your solar plexus in healing it. Humor literally heals. Um, it's very good for the solar plexus. It's very good for your body overall. So find a rom-com, you know, some kind of comedy movie, maybe a stand-up comedian that you love. Watch some stuff that will make you laugh. Um, that's just ridiculous. You can put on panda bear videos. I love panda bears, so I often watch panda bear videos when I know I need a good laugh that I know is guaranteed, because sometimes you watch the movies and you think it's gonna be funny and it's not that funny. Um, but panda bears are always funny because they're always falling down there. They're always slightly drunk, it seems. <laughs> so they're awesome. They're good for a good laugh, I know that. <laughs> um, dancing is very good for your solar plexus. So dance your night away kind of thing. Um, getting into the full sunlight is also very good for your solar plexus because it is the sun chakra. Um, and going for a quick paced walk. So back here it said, uh, oh, for the throat chakra, it's a leisurely walk. So if you want to heal your throat chakra and clear it out, leisurely walk. If you're trying to clear out your solar plexus, your gut, then walk quickly. <laughs> So you, now you know the pace of the walk for each chakra. <laughs> and then your sacral chakra. So that's the one just below your belly button. It covers um, all your sexual organs, your uterus if you're a woman. Um, and uh, it also covers um, ovaries and, and things like that. So in that area. It also covers a couple other um, um, organs, but mostly your reproductive organs organs so what this chakra really likes the sound that this light that this chakra likes it's very healing is the ocean rolling waves of the ocean rainfall or waterfalls or a babbling creek um, a running river that sort of thing any kind of water related sound this chakra responds to and loves um, <clears throat> So healing activities you can do for this chakra. Spending time uh, going for a walk by a lake, a river, an ocean if you're so lucky. Um, go swimming or even wading in the water. You don't have to go full swim. You can you know, roll up your pant legs and just go for a little wade. You're contacting some water, so a natural body of water. Um, very, very good for this chakra. Um, and drinking more water is actually very good for this chakra as well. Remember, this was the liquid chakra. So drinking more water and drinking olive oil, <laughs> or at least incorporating it in. And then your root chakra, because it's your grounding chakra, uh, it's, it's uh, the one that ho that's attached to your ancestors. Thunder, this is the sound that that chakra loves, and you can get YouTube videos that are full of thunder sounds and drumming. 
So drumming's very good. Drumming is one of those things that I have a drum that I use sometimes in my meditations. And I find drumming is really cool because you feel it while you're doing it, but when you really, when it really hits you is when you stop drumming and then the vibrations are still there. I love that feeling. So if you ever get a chance to get a hand drum, if you don't already have one, definitely incorporate that into your meditation. You might feel silly at first sitting in your living room just drumming, but you get used to it pretty quick. So um, I don't feel weird anymore when I do it. I love, because I know what's coming. I know it's like, oh, <laughs> that wave of drum sound that's gonna come my way. So healing activities you can do for your root chakra. Sitting under a tree, um, bare feet on grass if possible. If you can do bare feet, that's that's extra better because you're really grounded. I have very sensitive feet. I don't like to go barefoot at all ever. But with my with if my root chakra needs work, I will go into a nice soft. I I scout out this grass first, <laughs> and then I will take my socks and shoes off. And just standing, you don't have to walk around or anything. You just have to stand there because that's actually more grounding than walking around. Just standing there, be a tree and stand there with your bare feet on the grass. And obviously this is like a spring summer kind of activity. It's harder to do in the winter, um, but hugging a tree, um, watching a thunderstorm, and there are ones on YouTube, so they help definitely. I mean, it's definitely better if it's a real actual one that you're going through. Um, gardening, putting your hands in the dirt, no gloves just having that attachment to, to dirt. Um, making bread also, that's a good one for the winter when you can't get out on that grass kind of thing. Making bread, no machines. It's gotta be handmade because <laughs> it's the kneading, the, the contact with the yeast and the wheat and that sort of thing that is actually very therapeutic, very good for that chakra. So those are some activities you can do for your chakra now uh, or for each of the chakras I'm going to do a third video yes there's a third one coming up and I'm going to talk a little bit more about each chakra what I'm going to go into is a thing called the yantras um, so it's a little bit more advanced um, chakra work um, but I'll be putting up that third video in the next few days as well and I'm very excited to share the, sh the yantras with you and you're going to get a little more in depth um, information about chakras in general. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. Um, I hope you subscribe to my channel. Please do, because then you'll know when that third video is coming out and when it's up and ready to be watched. Please give this a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends. Um, post it on Facebook or your Twitter or Instagram, wherever you want to post it. I would love if you could share it um, because I'd love to get more subscribers. And thank you so much for being here and watching this video with me um, and being here with me. Uh, so I will see you again in that third video. And I hope you have a great day. And now you know how to kind of take care of some of your chakras. Bye.